Good morning, beloved of God. I'm here in uh, our library. They're doing roof work above my office. And so I escaped for some time of devotion here to the other side of the building. I hope that, you, it, this, that we find you well here today whenever you engage uh, a time of devotion together. Um, we'll share a devotion from Christ in our home and our partners at Augsburg Fortress. Uh, today, uh, we're invited on the 27th of February, this Monday, to the book of Hebrews. Um, so I'm, I'll meet you there if you want to spend a few moments here dwelling in God's Word together. Um, we'll uh, continue to share the journey. I hope you had a very nice weekend. Um, and... You are well today. Chapter 2, I'll meet you in verse 10 for a little bit together here. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here am I and the children whom God has given me. Since therefore the children share flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared the same things, so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For it is clear that he did not come to the help of a to help angels, but the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the people, because he himself was tested by what he suffered. He is able to help those who are being tested. If you worshipped with uh, the lectionary text yesterday, that uh, is, sounds probably familiar from the story of the temptation. Uh, and so we continue as we share these daily texts together. Uh, this is a devotion titled, Jesus Became Someone Like Me, again from Christ in Our Home. He invites our focus to that penultimate 17th verse that we read together. He had, Jesus had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect. Christians celebrate the uniqueness of Jesus as we sing in various gospel choruses, there is no one like you. Yet today, today's reading reminds us that Jesus came among us to share in our humanity and become like us in every respect. These words helped the early church overcome historical barriers of culture and nationality by embracing the new covenant that God made with the faithful through the priestly ministry of Jesus. Since then, these words continue to draw us into a much deeper understanding of what it means to be a child of God in the name of Jesus. As we struggle to heal across divides imposed by racism, homophobia, transphobia, political polarization, and more, we remember again that Jesus became like us, his siblings, at the deepest level of what we share that we are all human. He knows intimately all our struggles and temptations, our joys and our hopes. Let us learn from Jesus, who became like us so his redeeming love can make us more like him. Pray together, won't you? Holy God, heal our wounds and set us free to share with all the love we find in you. Amen. And as this day unfolds before you, be invited to continue in prayer for advocates serving in Lutheran offices of public policy, for uh, Lutheran advocacy ministry here in New Mexico. May God continue to bless you and hold you this day and as this week unfolds together, beloved. Thank you.